Hello everyone, my name is Dorit Chrysler. I am a film composer and thereminist and co-founder the New York Theremin Society. The theremin is such a different instrument to traditional instruments. It responds to the slightest movement of your body. So it is very important to think about how you set it up and how you fine tune it to reach the most stable position in order to be able to control it. So how to position yourself and how to tune and calibrate the audible range is crucial for whatever result you're attempting to achieve on this instrument. Let me show you some basics in how to possibly approach this as a reference point. Let's start with positioning. You want to adjust the height of a theremin to where the antennas are about the height of your belly button. This gives you a very stable position. You want to distance yourself from the instrument at about lower arm's length. Why? Because then you branch out without moving too much. Just your lower arm and your hand in whatever positions you're practicing along this invisible line towards the pitch antenna. Now as for positioning of the volume antenna, if you stand in belly button height towards the instrument, you also have um, the parallel angle of your other hand towards the volume antenna, which allows you to be very close to the null point of where your volume begins, which allows you to then separate each note up to the loudest point of the volume, which you're gonna set in calibration and fine tuning. The theremin responds to the slightest motion of your body. So ideally, you position yourself in a very stable way as to have the best result of controlling the instrument. Before playing a theremin, every time you approach the instrument and turn it on, your body is constantly in motion. So before you play any note, you want to tune and set the audible range for your instrument. The Clara Vox has a traditional and a modern setting. Both of them offer adjustments of tuning and they're very easily accessible, which is really helpful because every time you start playing the theremin, you constantly adapt the size of your audible range because the theremin instrument responds to everything that's around it and your body's in constant motion, even when you think it's not. In both modes, you can tune the pitch and the volume antenna with the same functional buttons. Let's start with the pitch antenna. And don't be confused because I'm left-handed, so I play the theremin the other way around. So let's start to tune the theremin before we get started, setting the audible range for the pitch antenna. In traditional as well as modern mode, you can use the pitch antenna knob to set the range for the pitch field. You want to set the zero point, which is the lowest note where you want your audible range to start. This is very important. You can choose to have it close or far, but in terms of stability with the body to have the best control, it usually is ideal to have the lowest note starting where your arm rests on your shoulder because you can venture out from there with your hand positions and wander along this invisible line towards the highest pitch. So if I turn the pitch antenna, you can hear how the size of the audible range changes. So I put the hand of where I want to have my lowest note and then find it on the knob. So my lowest note starts here now. I can now venture along this invisible line and have a very stable position. Let's fine tune the volume antenna. So after you set the zero point for your pitch range, you want to set the volume for your volume antenna. So the volume knob influences how your hand interacts with the volume antenna. The Clarox is calibrated to the midpoint of having the loudest volume available to you. If you turn it to the left, the 
the volume will diminish, but you still have the range from the zero point of where the volume starts to the highest volume. And if I turn the volume to the right, the response becomes stronger and the notes respond faster to my hand. It's very important to set this to your ideal playing curve because within that volume range there is such tremendous potential to really carve out the dynamics and shape every wave, every note with your hands, sculpt it and get out all those details that no other electric instrument really offers. Next chapter, calibration of volume and pitch antenna. The Clarabox arrives pre-calibrated with the setting in mid-level, from which on you can easily adapt your range. But you might want to recalibrate it yourself to set the exact range that you want. I usually prefer having the zero point or the lowest note of where your audible range starts where my hand is at my body, which is very stable, and then I can branch out from there playing. It is recommended to calibrate um, the volume and the pitch to the zero midpoint of the knobs, because once we do that, we can very easily then vary from there as a starting position the fine details of where we're standing close to the instrument. Let's calibrate the theremin. I'll set the pitch antenna knob to mid position and I set the timbre to one. This applies to the modern as well as to the traditional setting. I'm going into calibration mode by pressing the store and set root button at the same time. I hold my hands on it until it starts to blink. Now I'm in calibration mode. I'm seeking now the lowest mode, the zero point of where I want to start my audible range and hold my hand steady there and press the store button. So now my first note, the lowest range, the zero point will start right here. I don't have to set the high point in the pitch range because it automatically ends where the antenna is. So now that I've calibrated the pitch range, the lowest note starts where I set it and ventures up to the antenna and I can very easily now use the pitch antenna knob to fine tune it. Which is actually really helpful on the go when you play live as the range constantly changes because your body position constantly changes, even when you think it doesn't. Each Clarabox comes pre-calibrated, which applies in modern as well as in the traditional setting. But you might want to recalibrate yourself for your individual needs. This applies specifically to the volume antenna because you might not want the highest volume to be too far away from the antenna as to have more control reaching the zero spot and separate the notes faster. The further up you are, the more time you lose going back down. If the audible range is fairly short, you have much more control to shape the wave quick. But again, this is to your own personal style and liking. Go to timbre number two to set the volume calibration. If I want to set the loudest spot of the volume for my volume antenna, I go to the active output and I go into calibration mode. Once I'm in calibration mode, I place my hand as to where I want the loudest volume point to be. For me, that's approximately here. Then I press store while holding the hand over the volume antenna. And now I want to set the zero point of where the volume starts. It's really important to know where that spot is as to separate and control each note and bring 
to full fruition what the theremin really can do, which is this incredible dynamic that you can really only have when you work with the zero spot in the volume antenna. So I put the main output to mute, go into calibration mode again. Then I set my hand of where I want the volume to start and store it again. Voila. Remember that the volume calibration setting of setting the zero point and the highest volume is only available in the modern setting. Whereas for the pitch calibration, you can apply that to modern and traditional setting. Now let's test the volume. The zero spot is here where I set it. And I can very quickly also use the volume antenna knob to get more attack or less by adjusting it to the left or the right. It's a very smooth interface that really allows a lot of flexibility. So now that I've also calibrated the volume antenna, I can easily, the zero spot starts right here where I set it. And I can very easily now use the volume antenna knob to adjust the attack and the shape of the curve how I want it. In order to match the traditional and the modern setting peak volume, you want to adjust the volume antenna and you use the traditional setting and you find the loudest sound close by the midpoint of the volume antenna of where your traditional volume is and that will automatically bring you to the same level of the modern setting. In traditional mode, you send your signal in the Clarivox through an oscillator that then goes through an analog wave shaper that's influenced by the original theremin of Clara Rockmore and the EtherWave Pro. It first goes through the wave filter, which adds asymmetry to your waveform. In the zero position, there's no asymmetry applied, but if you turn it counterclockwise, the first half of the wave is more dominant, and if you turn it to the right side, the second half of the wave will be more dominant. And this allows for a very subtle fine tuning of your sound. It's most comparable to pulse width of many analog synthesizers. So if I turn the wave button counterclockwise, Turn it to the right. So very subtle changes that you can really play with to find your own sound. So this analog wave shaper really allows for a great variation of different colors for the theremin, which is really nice and opens a lot of opportunities. And I encourage you to take time to try find different sounds. Some of them really approach very much the old original analog RCA theremin or many other variations. And then if you're in the modern setting, you can save them in the software and you have them right there whenever you need them. Next up, we have the brightness knob. It increases the sharpness of the edge of your wave and adds more harmonic content. If I turn it to the right, more overtones are being added by sharpening the edge of your wave and it sounds brighter. And if I turn it to the left, less overtones are being added and the wave becomes softer and darker sounding. Okay, let's hear it. Woo! 
Finally, we have the filter. It's a low-pass filter based on the EtherWave Pro that has a very gentle curve, uh, much softer than, for instance, the ladder filter that you find in the Mini Moog D synthesizer model. So when I turn the filter to the right, all the high frequencies are passing through and you have a full range of a very bright sound. And as I turn it to the left, less frequencies pass through and the sound becomes softer and darker. Remember also that the filter is the last instance of the signal going through. So if you don't have the filter up, you will also not hear much effect of your settings of the brightness and the wave. On the Clarovox panel, you find delay, delay feedback, and delay time. This is a Bucket Brigade device analog delay, which adds so much to the basic tone of the theremin that you can play with. And you don't have to have an external analog device. You can also create a reverb effect with it and really expand to the very experimental classic sound or just add some richness to the bare theremin sound. Let's go through the different knobs. The delay knob itself controls how much delay you're adding to the signal. If it's turned all the way to the left, then you don't add any delay and you can increase the percentage by turning it to the right. The delay time allows you to control the time in between each delay. So if you turn it to the right, the time frame increases. And if you turn it to the left, it decreases. The delay feedback controls how many repetitions of each delay are being triggered. If you have it all the way to the left, there's the repetition of one. But if you turn it all the way to the right, it is infinite numbers of feedback and you really can get far out there with that and have a lot of fun with it. So the modern setting of the Clarovox takes the theremin to a whole new level. You have two modeling oscillators inside the instrument that then you can modify within an external software, saving the specific presets and then very quickly jump in between them and apply the unique sensitivity of wave shaping that the volume and the pitch antenna allow.